All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to day nine of Haskelling the Advent of Code. Uh, you may notice some changes on the channel. That's because I became a Twitch affiliate yesterday. So I will officially get paid if you like, if you subscribe. <laughs> so now you can like, uh, like and subscribe. Especially like if you have a, if you have like Amazon Prime and you've like connected that to your Twitch account, you can like subscribe for free. And uh, if anyone here does that, then that would be cool. Uh, Cause I literally have zero revenue um, from this channel, which makes sense. I just got affiliated yesterday, but I want to see, I want to see what it happens. You know, how much do I get per subscribe? And uh, also I'm like a paid PhD student, so I don't really need the money, but I kind of want to make at least one cent because if you're getting paid for something that makes you a pro streamer, <laughs> which is hilarious. All right, let's look at day nine of the advent of code. <coughs> make the deer day nine, go to day nine. Touch day nine dot images. Touch test input and touch the input. So how's everyone doing today? We had a we had a squadron of fighter jets fly over the city today. Um, they claim it was because you know it's like a Christmas thing they do, but I know the truth used to celebrate my affiliate status. There's no denying it. Denying it. All right, let's say it's open day nine. <clears throat> I actually did some hacking after hours yesterday and I changed the parsing of the initial problem from like string based parsing to byte string based parsing, which essentially means that we're not converting it to a length of list of characters anymore. We are working with the raw bytes when we, when we are, uh, when we're transcribing it or like when we are taking it from the raw input to the actual input that we look at, because I thought it would perform better because I looked at some streams, right? And the, and the rust people, they're doing like 160 nat like microseconds. Um, and then I looked it up and like fiddled around. I got mine to like three milliseconds. <clears throat> but then I tested it even more and turns out that task, like GHC, the program, the, the program itself takes like one and a half milliseconds to start to initialize the whole runtime system. So, and like Rust doesn't have to do that because it just compiles everything away. So. I mean, that's cool. It's cool that we, I mean, we have a lot, we, I mean, the runtime system does a lot, right? It takes a thunks, it evaluates a thunks. It does all the things that we needed to do, but it would be cool if we could do microsecond level time. So let's look at it. This is the moving cup of the day. It is the cup of the summer 2020, I think, or 2019. No, yeah. 2019 summer cup. I like this cup, but you can see it's slightly green or like it's not green, but it's reflecting some green. So it's like being green screened. All right, let's look at today's problem. <clears throat> Yesterday we had the creator of Advent of Code come in and uh, say hi. It'd be cool if he came again or if they came again. I'm not sure. My name is Evan, but you never know. All right. Encoding error. All right, we have the video game and we have Okay, an open data port on a little screen in the seat in front of you. So the ports are on standard. You managed to connect it to your computer through clever use of several paper clips. Nice. Upon connection, the port outputs a series of numbers, your puzzle input. The data appears to be encrypted for the exchange masking addition system, Xmas. Nice. Appreciate the puns. 
Xmix starts by transmitting a preamble of 25 numbers. After that, each number you receive should be the sum of any two of the 25 immediately previous numbers. The two numbers will have different values and there might be more than one such pair. For example, suppose your preamble consists of numbers 1 through 25 in the random order. To, to be valid, the next number must be the sum of two of those numbers. 26 will be a valid next number, it will be 1 plus 25. Uh, thanks for the follow, Lamar. Um, 49 would be a valid next number, this is some 24, 25, but 100 would not be valid. No two of the previous 25 numbers sum to 100. 50 would also not be valid, although 25 appears in the previous 25 numbers, the two numbers in the pair must be different. Okay. Uh, I, oh yeah. Happy birthday on Saturday. Uh, how, how, how does a stream birthday celebration go? I don't know, like, I would play happy birthday, but someone copyrighted that song. So, I can't, but, uh, yeah, happy birthday, Lamar. Wow. Everyone's birthday is this week. Actually, I have some, uh, I don't know, sad news, but, uh, I'll be, so I'm going back home to Iceland on, on Friday, actually. I take the train to Stockholm on Friday, and then I fly from Stockholm on Saturday. So on, so on the Friday itself, um, so on the Friday and Saturday, I'm not going to be streaming. I'm currently, I'm currently living in Sweden. I've been living here for five years now. So I'm technically, I'm eligible to become a Swede. Like I can get a passport if I want. But the problem with having dual nationalities is that like declaring taxes in the US becomes such a pain. I was born in Iceland, as you can tell from my Icelandic keyboard. This is supposed to be the Icelandic flag. It's like an abstract version of it. <coughs> All right, but let's uh, let's start the problem, right? This problem should be a bit easier than the ones that, that like at the last two problems, I think. So, suppose the twenty-six number is forty-five, and the first number no longer an option, as it is more than twenty. Oh, okay, so it's a rolling thing. Okay, cool. Now, for the next number to be valid. There needs to be some pair of one, one, nineteen, twenty-one, two, twenty-five, or forty-five that add up to it. Hmm. Okay, so we can't just like pre-compute things and then look up in a map. We will actually have to. We'll actually have to do some proper work. Okay. Yeah. Wait. Twenty-six would still be a valid next number. Is one in twenty-five? Um, or still, is that true though? Isn't, wouldn't, wouldn't. I think that's not true. I think because if you add 45, then one would drop out. So 27 would be valid, but 21, 26 would not be valid. But yeah, I was born in Iceland. It's a tiny, well, tiny, it's bigger than Denmark, but the population is pretty low, so it's a, it's a small island country. Best country in the world. Uh, doesn't everyone say that, though? Uh, I like it. I like the people. Uh, so here's where I'm right now. This is Gothenburg, Sweden. And uh, I'll be going here on Friday. And then I fly from here all the way to Iceland. It's gonna be great. Anyway, let's keep keep looking at the problem. So I think this 26 would not be valid because because it's one will be dropped out. Like 45 will be the new zero. Wait, one through 25 is actually just 24 numbers. Okay, I will. Okay. <clears throat> Because yeah, and then the then the preamble is 
25 numbers so 1 through 25 that's 25 numbers right am i wrong jeez like now i'm i'm like do i know how to count oh in a random order okay you're right but okay so that is okay but uh okay okay yeah okay here's this 20 okay thanks to me yeah yeah and the banana lit too i see i thought it was like in order and then one would have dropped out but it's 20 that dropped out so okay that makes sense all right so 65 would not be valid no two of them available let's jump to it 64 66 would not be valid as they are the result of 19 plus 45 and 21 plus 45 respectively <clears throat> so what i want to do is i want to pre-compute a map of the numbers and then so it'll be like a reference count so i will have um I will have like a map and it will count the amount of numbers that sum to it in the map okay and then when i when i and then i keep track of like the i, I keep i have to keep the input around right and then i will take 20 can i just map Minus 20 over... No, I can't do that. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Because I, I, I kind of... I feel like... Oh, right. Right, right, right. We're looking for a number that sums up to it, right? So 45. Um, so we essentially take 45. We check all the numbers in the map for all the numbers in the list and we just say so we, we keep a set of the numbers in the map and we keep uh and we keep the yeah we just keep the set of the numbers in the map and then we map 46 minus all the elements in the set and then we check whether any of those is an element in the set Okay, yeah, that's the trick. That's the same. Uh, that's the same trick we did for the 2020 pair thing. Uh, that's okay. All right, let's 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 just work it. So now we're gonna look at this here as a byte stream. Let me let's just write a parser from scratch. Import. Oh, this is gonna be module main where we're gonna import a text dot parsec dot byte string nah are we gonna do that though aren't we just going to okay we don't need it right get input is going to be this is gonna be file path to a set of ints get input is going to be we're going to import data dot set set import qualified data dot set as set we're going to do uh, set dot from list over read at int we need type application shape language type applications uh we read that set from list read at it lines dot get uh read file uh io io set int f map map read it Hi, mm, Marifin Abid. I'm saying that correct? I don't. Yeah, it's always nice to have new viewers. I hope you all are enjoying this. I, I, 
I'm having a lot of fun doing the programming, and uh, it's nice to have company. You know, I feel like all of you are here with me. Uh, and, you know, just, just hacking. It's like a hackathon. Just programming. You got some buddies. It's nice stuff. So, we have PP set from before. I, I'm just going to... I should create like a utils thing for stuff I use again and again. But I am... I want to also keep these self-contained. So, I'm just not going to do that. This is not going to be... Oops. Actually, that's good. So yesterday I was trying to optimize it and I had int sets. And that's just a set that contains ints. I think I'll actually use that instead. Uh, because it's just going to be faster. Because I think set uses ord. Int set can use the fact that ints are hashable and stuff like that. It's going to be faster. And set. Uh, but we're not we're not going for so much for speed here, right? Okay. Uh, main IO main is get input test input into footster ln dot print dot uh, pp set a dot Oh, just like this, right? Uh, GHC day nine I just oh day nine. And we are going to time it. See what happens. Yeah, four milliseconds. Just reading the set. This is why we this is why we have a hard time competing against the competing against the um, Rust people. It takes time to do these things, right? See, like I went, like I was what I was talking about earlier, you know, because we have we have like a big startup time, right? So if I just do here. If I just two milliseconds just or okay, one millisecond like one to two milliseconds just just printing something out so we have to pay that cost uh, every time so this ain't too bad but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about it too much I tried writing like auto parsec yesterday I did text dot parsec parsec is fine it's not included but like yeah for, for the, like here we don't actually need a big uh, a big a fast parser right it's just so such a simple stuff and like the parsing of integers is actually quite uh, it's a bit tricky you need to like you need to like take each digit and then you need to like fold over it to create the number uh it's a kind of a cool function but uh you just i just want a function that goes from byte string to int directly you know but that, that i don't think that exists uh, when are we getting them emojis? Good point, Hindasupa. I tried adding a uh, emoji yesterday, but it kept complaining that it was incorrect for no reason. It just said it failed. Try again later. So we're gonna get them one of these days, Hindasupa. Also, uh, Hindasupa's real name I shall not reveal here. It is not mine to review. Okay, let's see. Uh, we got the set. Now. Oh, wait. I can't map over sets, right? Can I map over an inset? That's like the thing with sets. You can't map over them easily because that changes the... I can map... I can map functions that would not change the ordering. I should be able to do that. Uh, 
Okay, we got some map functions here. Map, map monotonic, right, see? Map would have, we'll have to update everything again and again and again. But map monotonic will not. Because it doesn't change the ordering of a function. So we say here, okay, uh, we need, we need to keep the order. So let's not make this into a set. We need to keep the order here. So. Okay. Okay, so. Um, let's just write it. Solution. Takes in a list of things. What are, what is the question? What are we supposed to be doing? Okay, this is 20, 127. First step of attacking, uh... Oh yeah, thanks, Sintasupa. We did it in eight days. I think it's like people like admin of code. People like, there's not so many people streaming Haskell also, like, card out a niche. Alright. First number in the list, which is not a sum of the of two of the 25 numbers before it. What is the first number that does not have this property? Okay, so let's see here. So, okay, so, so, so for the solution, we're going to take in and then we're going to return an int, right? Solution a input. Okay, so where? Preamble. That is going to be take 25 from the input. So the first 25 numbers in the input. Um, uh, cur set is, that is gonna be set dot from list. Okay, uh, so this is take 25 of the input and then So, there's a language, uh, here's a larger example, it's only considered previous five numbers. Okay, so preamble length is a variable. So, say so int preamble length. Prelang, let's call it that. So, you're gonna take prelang here. We're gonna actually, we're just gonna say pre arrest is gonna be split at. So what does split at do? It, uh, it splits at the element. So split at one, one, two, three. That's gonna split it into the element at, so it's gonna split it. So the, the first, so we'll split it so that the, the previous, the first length list contains 25, t contains the int elements, right? So that works. And uh, let's see, so we split at here now. Solution prime. Okay, so it's gonna be... So that is gonna be taking the input, okay? Solution prime is going to take in the the input. Now, okay, we already have the input. No, it's going to take in the input. That's going to be like the ones, the list of elements to drop from the set. And it is going to take in the current set. It's going to take in the rest. And then it's going to take in it's going to return an int, right? Solution. So here we we set we send in the input. That's a list of things to drop. We send in the the valid. Uh, let's call it preamble. Uh, 
we send in the preamble and we send in the rest that's the first ones we're going to be checking and let's see here the so solution okay so so we're just gonna we're gonna assume that we have the uh two drop two drop and then the two drops and then we're gonna say preamble and we're gonna say to check and then to checks so we're gonna assume we have this now solution if we run out of things to drop that's you know we, we, we're just gonna go we're just gonna say error okay so we so anything else like if you don't have anything to check then we're just gonna error out error so nothing to check and or drop that's fine we're allowed to we're allowed to say that so solution here okay so we're gonna say equals first of all um, so we have the preamble that's the first five elements in the set so we are going to say set dot map monotonic Okay, where t uh, check set equals set dot map monotonic of uh, two check minus on the preamble map monotonic monotonic Let's say undefined here. What's wrong with this? data.inset does not export map monotonic that's not good okay i think we're 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 going too far with this inset thing let's just let's just import set i mean it's not gonna be that fast i mean it's going to be fast enough anyway we don't actually we don't need to deal with this Okay, so we're going to check set and then we're going to say if So if uh, oops If to check uh, If to check is a Hmm Right, so I mapped the so I want to find if there is a number good to me did you do it in rust like what language did you do oh nice is that including startup time like is that like command line runtime or is it Because like, like I showed you, like, it takes me a second, a millisecond and a half just to start GHC. Like, just to run print Hello World or put string L in Hello World. So, you must have a faster computer if you can start it and run the program in shorter time than it takes me to start. Okay, let's see. Um... Uh, So, okay, so as it could be 1 plus 25. The entire program. Uh, yeah, like, but like just the part that does the solution then, right? Or like also the parsing and everything else? So, okay, we want to check. 
There are there two numbers in the preamble or x plus y such that uh, said right so then we have to can check is there such a number x hmm let me see so said minus so we're checking if said minus y that's what we computed. We have a set of z minus y's. And now we want to see if... I think we want to see if the... So the sets of... So this... Yeah. So the intersection of this set... Is empty. So we have the preamble and we map the monotonic preamble. So if set.empty is empty, is it what? No, I think it's null, right? So I think if we check with, I think we say null to check if it's uh, Okay, so we want to see, okay, this is, is subset of. Okay, check whether the two sets are disjoint. That will be. So if the preamble and is disjoint. From the check set, right? Then, then there's. So if, if, the, if these two sets are disjoint, then there is no element in this set, which is also in this set. And if they are disjoint, then there is no such x such that z minus y is in the thing. And then we return to check. Else, we call solution prime. Hey, just some one in water. Nice to see you. Okay, Timmy, please clarify. If you, when you wrote time day nine, that said, oh, 800 milliseconds. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. I finally got it. Uh, that will be a tough one to beat. I think two drops. Preamble prime, two checks. Uh, so it was that for like the part two also, Timmy? Chat dead? Timmy was just talking, what do you mean? Just some in water. Riff chat, can I get an F in chat? Oh my God, nice. Uh, we want to delete so what we will uh, wanna, what we want to do is that we want to delete um, we want to we want to delete we want to say a uh, yeah, we want to say two, no, two drop set dot delete uh, on the preamble. And this, we want to set dot insert the to check. A ding ding ding. Ding, 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 ding. To check. Wait, insert is the other way around. Oh. Oh yeah. So we're gonna go to. Set that insert. 
like this. I think this should work. Uh, let's see. Um, so for the test input, it should be solution five. Oops. Compile it and run it. We get 62 out. Here you go, chat. Have at it. Hinta. Oh. Yeah. If you if you want to subscribe, that would be. I've never had a subscriber before. If you have like Prime Gaming, you can subscribe. That'd be funny. What language are you writing it in? This is Haskell. Functional programming language. Um, so everything is an expression, which is nice. Wait, let me check. Uh, it said 62. Uh, the only number who does not follow this rule is 127. Okay, that's not good. So it immediately said 62. So these, we took the first. Uh, okay, that's not good. Hmm. Let's see. A. Uh, let's see what happens here. Okay, so let's see. Uh, this is gonna be trace show ID and this is gonna be trace show ID we're gonna import debug.trace here uh, yeah but then I'm constructing all the pairs I don't want to construct the pairs to me that is n squared we can do this in n log n right even n because we can do hashing hash sets am i wrong so pre preamble I mean, yeah. I mean, if you do it that way, n squared, Tim, that's gonna take eight hundred milliseconds, right? Ain't nobody got time for that. But yeah, I let's see if uh, I mean maybe this just doesn't work. That would be that'd be awkward. P plus pp set let's, let, let's create like a like a t function here which is gonna say be takes takes in a string and a set int and returns set of int T is gonna be a T id uh, S equals trace id plus PP set S S. So let's trace all of these here. T P preamble. Uh, it's gonna be T C. T, uh, computers, I mean, I know to me, but we, we're trying to do this, uh, you know, cause, cause the things that like this will get more and more complex as we go on. And then we need, we need to make sure that it's as fast as possible. Right. We want to do it. We want to keep, keep us honest. 
So the preamble is 15, 20, 25, 35, 47. And C. Okay, what is the trace show it to, to check? Dun, dun, dun. Printing side effects outside of IO. What is this black magic? It's called debug.trace. I think it literally just does unsafe perform IO print or put string ln and then returns the element. It's good for debugging, but uh, you sometimes get things in a weird order. So let's see here. We have, so is, is it the, so. What? So, so I have the preamble is 15, 20, 25, 35, 47. Uh, do I have a job? Yeah, I'm a PhD student, so they pay me pay me money to think about stuff like this and teach and I have to publish papers about stuff like this uh, so yeah this kind of is my job but uh, yeah but I'm also you know the thing is we just have to think about super theoretical things and we just don't do that much like actual sit down and program that stuff so that's why I'm also doing these things, you know, kind of keep my skills fresh. So here we have P, right? And we were trying to say 40. Okay, yeah, 40 minus 15, 25. 40 minus 20, 20. 15, yeah, 5 and minus 7. Thing is that this is not monotonic. Uh, on the clock pierce, it's 6.42, okay? I'm not on the clock right now. It's my free time. Give it up for Pierce. He knows what I do, because he does the same thing. Do I think it's necessary to have a university degree to work as a programmer? Uh, no, but there is a difference between working as a programmer and working as a computer scientist. Um, and it's kind of, I, I want to say it's a bit, so the thing is, one part of programming is the architect, the architecture, right? You're writing the entire system up. Uh, you know, you, 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 you're designing the system and then you have to know your computer science because you want you don't want to do n squared algorithms right you want to do pure good fast algorithms and if you know a lot of computer science especially like you know if you have a bachelor's or a master's that's what you learn like here are the tools we have designed so far and here's how to use them um and so you become better at architecting the system right now another part of the system is just actually just writing all the code you know so if you know what you're supposed to be doing, you don't, so, you know, writing the code itself. So the actual program, you don't need to have a university degree, but, but, um, you know, it does give you a lot of tools to work with. Um, but you can, you can learn, you can learn those yourself. Uh, you can just pick them up as you go. So, you know, I've been doing this stuff for eight years. If you'd been writing code for eight years, you'd probably be better than me. But I don't know. Yeah, that is true. Uh, that is very true. So how many languages do I know? You want to like know actual human languages or actual programming languages? I know a lot of languages, but like also like what is knowing a language? Like I can do stuff in C, I can do stuff in Java, I could I can do so I, I'm very comfortable in Python, I'm very comfortable in Haskell. 
you know, comfortable in JavaScript. Um, but then there's like so many other languages like MATLAB and stuff, you know, that like, yeah, I can, I can make things happen, but I, I don't want to use them, right? So, but you know, I'm a programming language researcher, right? So my job is to create new programming languages, fiddle around with it and see what happens, right? So, and you know, do I know those languages? I mean, do, are they even languages if I made them up? That's kind of cool, right? But uh, human languages, well, I know, I know English, hopefully. I hope you agree. I know uh, Icelandic. Um, I, so I, I want to say, so I could claim that I know Danish, Swedish, and Norwegian, but I want to say I just know Scandinavian. Um, and then I know some German. So I want to say five languages that I could claim that I'm okay with. Um, Icelandic, English, uh, Scandinavian. So Norwegian and Swedish, yeah. Not so Danish, I know, but I wouldn't say I, I'm good with it. And then, and then German. Spreche ein bisschen Deutsch, aber ich glaube, dass meine deutsche Anseher nicht verstanden, was sie sagen. Für ich habe Deutsch nur nur vier Jahren gelernt, doch das ist ganz gut, ja. Anyway, I, I, I know enough know enough German to... I, I lived in Berlin for like three months and it, it worked out. Yeah, I know. Icelandic is a, it's its own thing. Um, nobody knows... I, I mean, Icelandic is a, very, is a very specific language. And it's like, it's one of the Nordic languages, but... Uh, uh, but uh, the thing is, okay, we can't use map on a tonic. Why? Because our our function is not there. Because we're we're doing the we're negating, so it becomes exactly uh, non-monotonic, correct? And it, it's in the wrong direction. No finish. Bananiletu. Now I know how to pronounce it. Bananiletu. Just added himself as a Finn. Uh, no, I don't know Finnish, but I really like the Finns though. I was at uh, I did a, I did a stint at Stanford. It was a Stanford summer program thing, and there was a bunch of Finns there, and they're the only ones who could say my name, Mahti, Mahti, Mahti. The cutest thing though is like a Finn speaking Swedish. Such a such a nice way. <laughs> they sound so cute because they're like they just have like a complete Finnish accent and then they they're still speaking Swedish that was that was nice okay uh, this specifically is not a monotonic function so we have to pay the cost here that's okay so now we got 127 see this is what happens if you lie about monotonicity. I'm wondering, can we do this and keep it monotonic? Because I would want, you know, I want a map monotonic where... Um, convert the set to a set of... to an ascending list of elements. Uh, do, 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 do. What's happening? Because I kind of I want this to be O of n, and now it is almost O of n. Okay, we have to construct the set anyway, right? So from list, so build a set from a descending list in a linear time. So this is log n. If the elements are ordered a linear time implementation with performance equal to from distinct ask list. So what I want to do is a map anitonic. So the anitonic, I think. So 
anitonic. Wait, monotonic? Tonic. So it said something here. It had like a take, drop, drop, antitone, antitonic. So map antitonic of a set. F over a set. So this is going to be a function which is strictly decreasing. Uh, map antitonic is going to take a, a function from A to B and a set of A's and going to return a set of B's. Map antitonic of set. So that we're, we're going to we're going to say here uh, we're going to say to ask list set. So we're going to like make the ascending list that starts with that starts with zero, one, two, three, right? So this is like, and it says subject to map fusion, right? So we say map F set to ask list. And then this is going to be a strictly decreasing function. So we say set dot from desk list. Uh, can I just do this? It won't, it doesn't like it. Okay, and we need EQB. EQA. EQB. I don't even think I need the EQA without using any function. Okay, map antitonic. Antionic, anti, monotone, antitonic. This is gonna be antitonic, and it doesn't want to do that because it's not in set. Oops. Okay, still works. See, and now we're doing. We're essentially doing map monotonic. Uh, but we are flipping it around because so so we have we have an ascending list and we apply a strictly decreasing function. It will literally flip the order. It will exactly flip the order, right? Anyway, I think that's cool. Map antitonic should be in there, right? That's what I would like. Uh, one of our utils. Let's just mark it utils. Gotta go fast. Yeah. So now we have. Uh... So you know this is gonna be O of n. This is gonna be O of log n. And it's gonna be it's gonna be fast. And to me, our good friend said 800 milliseconds. Okay, but like, yeah, we did this, and then we're doing set disjoint, which is gonna be, that's gonna be a pain, right? So, let's check it. Preamble, check set, preamble, two drop, preamble prime. We don't need the T here. Uh, let's get our input. Do, 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 do. We're using the old, let's just copy paste. Oh no, I already bought it. Let's just copy paste. Uh, wow, these are gonna be big. Let's see. Uh, but, okay, but it's gonna be 25. So go test, so input into the print. Anybody? Five milliseconds. Beat that to me. Let's see if it's correct though, before we start coding. All right. See? That's why you learn computer science. You save 
795 milliseconds. Imagine what you can do with that time. I can't follow multiple times. Anyway, we do set disjoints checks because they are uh, log n and not n log n not n squared. And that's why and it's also like, you know, look at the input. It's a thousand elements. So we've checked thousand times eight, eight thousand elements. Well, while the n squared solution has to check a million elements. You know, on the difference between eight thousand dollars and a million dollars. It's a lot of dollars. Anyway, we did part one. Let's say yeah, and this is like a non-total function. So it works. Now maybe we have to do it n squared anyway for for the second time. I think also, you know, if you're gonna be doing a live stream of programming. That's when you should have a computer science degree, you know? You won't be caught unawares by any... Uh, you won't be caught unawares by any algorithmic complexity, right? Because you know... 18 milliseconds in Python. Python is also fast. Especially like, did you put it into sets in Python? Like, did, you, did you use the Python set stuff? Ban banani let too. Because like that's what I usually do in Python. I use all the built-in collection stuff because that is written in like high performance C. And because it's written in high performance C, it goes fast. And you just glue it together with Python. And that is like that is the best way to program. That's how CCP does it. The company behind EVE Online, they just have C++, I think, and then a bunch of Python to glue it together. And it's fast enough for a video game. Okay, so you must find the contiguous set of at least two numbers in your list, which sum to the invalid number from set one. Ooh. Okay, Python has glue. Yeah, that's how you do it. I mean, that's, Python is a scripting language, right? So you should use it to write scripts that glue stuff together. Also, if you're joining in, we just finished part one. We did it in five milliseconds, of which like three are just starting the thing <laughs> because uh, um, uh, GC, you know, there's a bunch of runtime to initialize, uh, but it's fast after we get started. And you know, if you're writing a server, you're not gonna be killing the server, starting the server, killing the server, starting the server. You, you warm it up. Even like the containers that you can run on Amazon Lambda, like they are warm. So when you get it in, it just, it just fires off. And if you're joining, uh, please feel free to follow the stream. Because the more followers I have, um, Twitch like gives me a bunch of stuff that I can do. I can do like, I can do stuff if I have followers, which is, which is nice. But uh, I don't know. I don't know how to do this. I started streaming properly December 1st, nine days ago. And uh, so I'm still a noob. I'm not like Hunta Supa. He's a pro streamer for a long time. He knows how to do emojis. And that's not, that's not trivial. Okay, so here we've, let's say input is getting the input. Um, so test input, getting the input. And then we are just going to say let's solve one equals the solution of Five on the test input. Now uh, input is going to be to get input of input, 
and then uh, let me let's see let's solve sol one is this sol two is solution of 25 over the input and then we're gonna print uh, print sol one sol and then print sol two so what I'm doing here is uh, yeah so what I did is that I I bought a bunch of stuff not for this stream right because i do like that's part of my job as a phd student is i have to write articles i have to make research happen as peers could tell you all about that guy knows how to do research uh you have to publish these kinds of papers um and then you have to keep a talk about those papers, right? So, here's my setup at work. Pierce, I'm, tr I'm trying to rep you here, okay? That guy knows how to, he does the papers all the time, okay? So yeah, this is why I have this setup. Because I, I do, I do talks. Um, and I think, I think actually Pierce, he showed off his like super cool setup. And like for, for on twi Twitter, he had like a nice microphone and a weird stand and whatever. Showed his super cool setup. And I was like, damn, I got to get in on that game. <laughs> so I have like a bunch of like expensive lights. Also, I have money issues in the sense that I spent too much money. So I got a bunch of nice lights. I got a nice ring light. I watched Alejandro Serrano's talk at ICP. He had a nice green screen thing going on, so I got a green screen. And then I have a nice Canon camera, which I'm using as a webcam. Yeah, find it. Find it, Pierce. Link it in chat. Are you even allowed to link? And then I'll go to it. I'll show it on stream live. Yeah, so that's why I have all this stuff. Um, and also, you know, I haven't been able to travel so much, 2020. So being able to communicate uh, with my family and friends on Zoom in like high quality with good audio. It's just been very helpful for my sanity, you know? Uh, you know, when grandma sees you on screen and you look like you're on TV, you know, you have very good quality. And she's like, wow, nice. That brings me a lot of joy. Now you can see me in HD, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's why I have this nice camera. Um, but then before that I had some, I was playing around with, uh, getting, I, I was, you know, I was trying to like build my way up to the setup. I just decided in the end, I'll just get a proper camera and then I just got into photography as well. Um, but then I, I bought this small camera here. I'm not going to show it to you because it will screw up the entire setup. Oh, sh I already screwed it up a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so I have like an extra camera lying around to do the keyboard cam. And I like the keyboard cam. Because what is a programmer without his keyboard? You got to show off your keyboard. Also, I keep repping Pierce. Pierce and I, we've met. At least, like, maybe twice. At least once. But we are Twitter buddies. He's also into giving good talks and uh, having nice keywords. But he has fancier key switches than I do. He has like topper stuff. Yeah, I think we met at Ice. No, yeah, in Berlin, right? I was like, you were hanging out in the couch, like where the bar was, but like not at the bar. And uh, yeah, we were hanging that there. And like it was you, it was uh, William Bowman, also a legend, it was Paulette. Also, she's a, she was a Twitter legend. Like she, she had a thousand followers that day in Berlin. That was cool. And uh, and then now, since then, we've just been Twitter buddies. And it's funny, you know, because I I only talk to Pierce on Twitter. But also on this PL talk thing, though. Yeah. Also Paulette, like she's the one who gets us into this stuff, right? And, and Bowman, like they they those those two know Twitter. They are so good on Twitter. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I met Pierce once, but he's my Twitter buddy. Is that a parasocial relationship? 
I don't know. I don't know what it means. Um, yeah, I also did my own company for a while. And it's like going on the side, but uh, you know, if you do a PhD, it's it can be hard work, but they also pay you for like three to five years to just think about programming languages. And you're just uh, yeah. Oh, famous recordings. Are you guys are you are you all ready for this? Oh shit. I didn't even like it. Oh no, this is my Icelandic account. I have an alt. I have two accounts. I have one in Icelandic. Why? Because... If I tweet to everyone in Icelandic all the time, people don't like it. Wow, I didn't even like this. Wow, okay. Anyway, here's his crazy recording studio. And I think I copied this initially, like I got this mic. But then I, it turns out it's a, like, I don't like condenser mic. They pick up way too much. And then I stole the camera setup. And now I am the master. As Darth Vader famously said, Xcodify. Yeah. You know, one of these days I'm going to get guests on the stream. I'm going to have Pierce come over and we're going to do stuff together. It's going to be good. Uh, let's see. Hello guys, I'm learning a data science and analysis on Python. I totally want... Come on, Pierce. You got a nice camera. You got a nice microphone. You can totally be on stream, man. Okay, I'm totally new in this field. And, uh... I want to upgrade my skills and mindset with this hot new topic. My first project is to build data paper on Spotify by the client. Okay, he's just linking his, uh, stream. Go check this stream out. I mean, I, I really rep, I like people programming on Twitter because I, I want people to know how it is. See you around, Karayax. It was nice to have you around. All right, let's, let's go work on problem number two. Also, check out this talk. It's good. It's good stuff. Uh... Okay, uh, yeah, but yeah, programming on Twitter, that's, it's a pro, like, there's always, there's a couple of streams, and they always have, like, 10 viewers. Like, the, the ones that have the most are, like, programmers who are, like, gamers, and they're, like, doing a pre-stream. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a no-go, but I'm a noob, so I enjoy the talking. Okay. Now, but let's uh, let's keep going at this. Actually, do, 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 do. we actually got sixty-two earlier once we when we did the thing wrong, right? And that's just a that was just a fluke, I think. Okay. Uh... Final step in breaking the Xmas encryption relies on the invalid number you just found. You must find a contiguous set of at least two numbers in your list which sum to the invalid number from step one. This is gonna be this is gonna be a bit rough. Yeah, Kiraiax, you know, I it's it's probably a no-go, but I, I also respect the hustle. I think that's the thing, you know, if you want to, if you want to stream. Because, like, Twitch does nothing to help you grow. I think you just have to hustle. I respect the hustle. Let's see. Now we have to find a contiguous set. This is the 2020. This is day nine of the Haskell, of the Advent of Code 2020. Uh, we're doing problem number two. We did problem number one in a millisecond or so, I think. Compute time just the problem. Uh, which was better than Timmy, which is like the only, only thing. Yeah, day seven was hard. Day seven was very hard. Day eight was hard. 
Uh, but don't despair. It gets a bit easier again day nine. I think this is easier than the ones we've done before. I'm just, I'm just talking way more. That's also the problem, right? I got, I've, I, I've got more people on the stream now. I like talking to them, so it takes me way longer than it did initially when nobody was talking. Okay. Um, so find a contiguous set of at least two numbers in your list with sum to the invalid number from step one. I think we can reuse the code. Uh, so we're going to have like a running sum. And then we will... We will... We will like add to it if we have... If it's too much and then drop from it if it's too little. No, drop from it if it's too little and add to it if it's... Drop from it if it's too much, add from it if it's too little. Let's see. Okay, uh, so what the one we're looking for is going to be the number. So solution two. Ding, ding, ding. It's gonna take in the, so we don't need the preamble, right? We just need to find the contiguous set of at least two numbers. So let's start it off with the solution. So the, the, what we're looking for, that's going to be the first one. Looking for... Then we're just going to take in the list of ints. And... No, we're gonna do it like this. So this is gonna be looking for... Ah. I'm mixing up things. Looking for... We're gonna take in the current sum. And we're gonna take in a list of ints. And we are going to return... So... Okay, okay, so it's going to be the list of it. So these, these are going to be the numbers we have currently. This is going to be the list of numbers we're looking at. And then we're going to return... We're going to return the numbers we're looking at. We're going to return our numbers we end up with. So, we're looking for... We're going to have... Cur sum, we're gonna have cur else. So this is gonna be like we're gonna we're gonna be looking at the the, the top one because we might wanna drop it. Uh so yes, this is gonna be cur else. And then we're gonna have incoming. Okay, uh and we're gonna be looking at the head of incoming. So it's going to be I uh, incoming. Now, we're going to say, okay, if current sum is the one that we're looking for, then we return the current else. Else. What do you want to do? Uh, else. So if we were not, if we don't have the current sum. Then we want to check if cur sum is larger than looking for. Then we want to see, we want to do, do uh, we want to do solution okay codify i was new eight days ago <laughs> and look where i am now i don't know even where i am am i somewhere it's all rising to my head so if we're looking for so if the current sum is is more than we're looking for we are going to remove so the new new current sum is going to be current sum minus c. We're going to remove the first element of the elements we have, and the 
cur inc the current and the, the incoming will remain the same so and then we have a, we'll have cs here and then we have the let's have this these just ink and these are just gonna be l's so if we have this then okay so otherwise a uh, looking for some cursor man you see and then we so we remove the top element and we 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 just keep, we remove it from the sum and then we keep going and then we don't change the incoming otherwise if uh if it's not equal and it's not bigger then it's going to be smaller then we're going to say solution two looking for cur sum plus i ink plus i and then else oh yeah and then i need to i need to add it to the back of else right what is at doing in that context the at is so here we so this is a pattern match so c to cs but i want to be able to refer to the whole thing so so instead of having to say a uh, so I, I give a I give a name to this pattern match so l's is going to be the same as so l's is going to be ccs so i just give the name to the pattern match that i'm w looking for it's actually more useful if you're dealing with records and stuff but yeah you, you're just saying else at so you're giving a name to this pattern here okay uh here i wanna i wanna i wanna add it to the end right so i would i guess so no this works uh but it is not good so what do we do we use a clever data structure known as data.sequence which uses something crazy called finger trees uh to give you lists where you can add to the back and the front as much as you want without without even wondering about it import data dot sequence import qualified data dot sequence as seek. okay and then this here the current l so that's the only data structure we have to add to the end at it's going to be a seek of int and this is we're going to return a seek of int so that's going to be correct now i have to change this to be the this operator seek dot i think it's this let me let me see because it's like a you, you can pattern match on these sequences data dot sequence okay yeah Oh, there's a funny little guy here. Uh, like this. So it's just essentially saying, it's just the same as the colon, except it's in a sequence. And what we can do here is we can say seek. I think, right? Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, it's like this. Raffiano, if we follow that logic, we would have spent 800 milliseconds solving the first problem. We gotta do it the proper algorithmic way, you know? Why doesn't this want to import? Okay. But that already worked, right? 
but it's this one that doesn't work. Oh, it does work? Okay. Let's see if this works. So then we add the element, we add it to the end of elements, right? So this is going to be a super efficient sequence. Uh, I mean, the end of that sequence is in the standard library, right? So we have to use the standard library, right? Going to be good. Um, let's say print solution two. And what are we looking for? Okay, so actually this will be solution to prime and we're gonna say solution to is going to be the, you know the int we're looking for and the incoming things and it's going to return us a seek int and solution to is going to be a so we just, what we're essentially doing is that, you know, we want to give a kind of a name to the initializer here. Where? So it's going to be solution to prime of, uh, so the looking for, um, so we're going to have two elements here, A, B, and then rest. A, so the current sum will be a plus b. We need something here, and then we're going to feed it the rest. And this is wrong. Solution two is applied to too few arguments. Uh, so it takes in the the okay. Yeah, we have to pass it the looking for as well. We don't actually have to because we're defining it like. It's gonna be in scope here, so we could just use this looking for, but yeah. Okay, and how do we create a sequence of two elements? Dun, 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 dun. We're just gonna from list it. This is gonna go so fast. Oof, I need to feed it stuff. Yeah, salt to. You ready for this? That was fast. If I do say so myself. We looked at the entire data set and we did all this summing back and forth and it took us this little time. Now we have to check. We have to get the smallest and the largest number. So, okay. Cont set. Are we just going to believe that this just worked? Cont set is equal to print cont set. So four five seven four four zero three seven two three five seven nine seven four five seven four four zero three. I mean, this is. Four eight one four six two three, yeah, and seven two five three seven nine seven. Yeah, I mean, this is a contiguous set. Uh, let me see, and then we do. That's what I like about Haskell. You know, we did we did all this cool stuff. It, you know, this is not like a line, right? So it, we did all this cool stuff uh, in seven lines of code, right? We even, we even did, it's, 
It's good stuff. I like it. Um, so I do computer science. Well, save time. Save hundreds of milliseconds. Uh, let's see here. The set is definitely continuous. Uh, let's see. Data.sequence. There's like some two list function, right? Can we, is there like, is we, can we just say print concept? Okay, so minimum of concept. Let me ma equals minimum concept. Okay, we're, we're just gonna say res equals minimum of concept plus the maximum concept print res see if it's correct i think it should be what is the sum here because the sum had to be the number right what do you mean Yeah, I mean the sum is correct and it is continuous. So this is correct. Damn. All right, we did day nine, and I I like these solutions. They're very algebraic, and they are extremely fast. And I, I, they're not n squared. I think they are all n, n log n in the, in the, in the highest. You know, this is gonna be. This is yeah. I like it. I like these ones. So here, <laughs> I'm sorry, Timmy. What are you doing? Are you like finding all? possible continuous sets and checking the sum of all of them anyway i'm pretty happy with this result it all worked out for us in the end uh we did it quite fast this is like o of n log n uh, mostly because we, I think the set dot disjoint operator is, it is expensive, uh, where M are the two sets, but this M here will be 25, right? So it's not going to be such a big, big issue, right? Uh, this is M times log M, which is bounded by N and we have to iterate over all of them. So it's going to be N log N. So for all of them, we do log n. Log, log, log. I like this map anti-tonic thing because then we we can just we can map over stuff in a we can map over it in like O of n time. Even if it's not a monotonic function, it's a it's an exact opposite of a monotonic function. And then this here. Like they say, oh, look, S no, wait. Okay, subject to list fusion. So like, I think this, this here, I'm not even sure it will like create these lists. It will just fuse JC does magic like that. And um, set out this join, that's gonna cost us M log N. This is going to be n log n, 25, but the, it's a constant, so it's going to be, this is going to be 25. So initial one, 25, uh, and then we have to iterate over all the elements, so this is going to be O of n. And for all of them, we are going to do some set.inserts, delete sets, n log n, these don't matter. So this, okay, these are going to be log n. So we have to do that n times. So that's going to be n log n. Um, no, this is going to be log 25. So that's a constant. Because we're, we're, it's not changing. It's not dependent. So it's going to be O of n. 
And the same thing with this disjoint thing is that these are going to be these are going to be m log n and then this is going to be this is going to be uh, the constant also 25 like not a constant like it's going to be the of ofc so i think this all of this here is going to be the uh, o of n Because these, both of these sets are not dependent on n, right? They're dependent on the constant. So this is an O of n solution, which is quite a lot better than n squared. And this is also an O of n solution. We're using the magic finger trees. They are crazy good. So actually some new research on finger trees. Uh, they've made them slightly faster, but I'm not going to show you that paper because that guy, I don't like that. That's okay. You don't have to like everyone, right? Um, but, uh, yeah. So it's basically, it's basically like a list, except you can put stuff at the left and the right. Typically slower. And less when you're going here, but it's uh, yeah. But they are they are quite good on like average. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a. I mean, I think I'm, I'm not gonna say short one. I want to say this is like the average length one. Um, like yesterday was four hours. That was so long. And uh, you know, I I appreciate a follow if you you haven't yet because then i gotta pump those numbers up right um and if you have like a free subscribe that would be cool like one of those cool uh you know, like the amazon prime subscriptions like if you're subscribed to amazon prime you can like subscribe for free anyway i just want subscribers you know i have zero subscribers right now uh, but I don't, I don't think, I don't think people subscribe that much. I also think like, I'm not running ads or anything, so I don't know, but you know, it's, I'm not here for the money. I'm here for the company while I program and you guys are quite good at it, right? Wow. I got, wow. Okay. I can press something and say, send thanks. Damn. It's my first subscriber. Thanks, ALX Shine. You're gonna have something like forever uh, if you keep subscribing. You are gonna have like, you're gonna be like a founder of the channel, right? So, yeah, I will remember you when I am the biggest programming streamer with dozens of viewers. <laughs> Program streaming is not not that big of a genre actually what are you planning to do after aoc that is a good question i've been asking myself that so one idea because i like i quite like these problems i might just do old aocs uh like from 2019 from 2018 um yeah that is true like so yeah, so that's that's what I might do. I just might do more admin code because I haven't, I didn't do the previous. I did do some of it previously, but uh, I never finished an entire year, so I might do that. Um, and then you know, I'll also, I think I'll also like to stream me hacking on research stuff. I think that's gonna be interesting, right? Because then we don't have an oracle. We don't know if it's correct. And yeah, big channels. There's way too much chat, right? And that's why you have this subscriber-only chat. Because, like, if you have a thousand viewers and, like, 20 of them are subscribers, then that make chat, makes chat okay again. But, you know, the big ones, like Pokimain, it's just, you know, the chat is just going all the time and there's no way you can keep up with it. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I hope you like these solutions. I'm quite proud of them, actually. I think, I think it's okay to be proud of these solutions. They are 
functional and they are they are fast what more do you want git commit am uh, day nine day nine is also I used to follow day nine that was like a good streamer by the back in the day or like another streamer but he had like these episodes on youtube that were a lot of fun uh okay yeah that's cool are you using the regular expressions for parsing i mean i guess you are right there's no there's no problem so far let's use regular expressions unless you're doing some crazy stuff with them. but uh yeah so i'm I, I limit myself to i've limited myself so far to the base library on uh, on stream i i did use some like base and like stuff included in base you know like data.set data sequence this is all like included with the base ghc i tried to optimize yesterday's i tried to get as much uh oh yeah that's true i just used that much just string splitting <laughs> and it was uh, it worked but i that's like after that i was like hmm i should start writing a parser and that's what I did, like yesterday, uh, not on stream, but after the stream. I spent, it was like four hours yesterday. It was too much. But I still went back, because I love this stuff. And I used the Parsec parser. Because I wanted to see if I could make it faster. And then I used something called the Atto Parsec parser, which is even faster than Parsec. And I was like, why am I taking two milliseconds to just load the thing? Where the Rust people are doing, you know... 150 microseconds and then uh, and then it turned out that you know GHC just takes two milliseconds or like one millisecond and a half to start and if that's you know so I already have 1500 microseconds there and I can't go below that so I was like no I'll just I'll just keep doing it in a algebraic way and then we can we can we can do microseconds later but you know this solution here so nice right and like there's no kind of what is he doing here like what is wait what is this crazy operation there's no category theory or anything it's just like check if the set is disjoint you know add it to the elements keep it running running tally uh so i guess this would count as dynamic programming I think this is technically dynamic programming in the sense that, you know, instead of calculating the sums again and again, we just have like this running sum, so it's kind of memoized. But, uh, yeah, so this is dynamic programming. And you want to do fast, fast programs for like hard things, it's usually dynamic programming. And then like programming competition problems are usually dynamic programming. And, uh,. You just have to, you just have to really think about like, what am I going to be evaluating? What do I want? Like, is there a way to keep the running tally? That's usually what you're doing. Uh, giving you give the state along as an argument. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's also what I'm doing here. Like a solution to, so this is, this is tail recursive, right? It ends up calling a function at the end. And then what it can do is it can reuse the closure it's called uh and this is like a very classic pattern yeah like you 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 define the initial thing and then you kind of launch uh, uh, a tail recursive version and this here gets compiled okay it doesn't get compiled into the loop but it behaves like a loop like a tight fast loop and that's that's fast. That's always going to be fast. That's how you do fast function programming, essentially. You kind of write these tail recursive functions, and the optimizer can optimize that so much because it doesn't have to create all these contexts. And it becomes pretty fast, right? So, and I think that's true. You know, I do these tail recursive, but like that's just how I write code, right? Um, in functional, like, I'm so used to tail recursive optimization that that's always like how i think about it like i'm like i have input 
I am just gonna iterate over the input, right? And how do I do that? Well, I do a loop. And how do I do a loop? Well, I do tail requests and stuff. So it works. It works great. It's fast. And uh, so what? What computer science knowledge did I use here? Well, I think this was definitely computer science. This monotonic map over a set, because I know I kind of know how the set structure works. It's like actually like a tree structure. It's a heap. Um, so like if I use the hash set, I could not have done this because then the sets would have the hashes in the set would have changed. I guess I could have just put back into the set, but that didn't work. So I know what monotonic functions are, and then I. That's how I figured out. Okay, I can do. I can do the same with map anatonic. That was computer science, I guess. And uh, doing it in a set-based manner. I don't know. So I did. A, I have a bachelor's in math, as well as a bachelor's in computer science. So I uh, I tend to think about sets a lot, or you know, I'm I'm very comfortable with sets. So we'll just turn it into a set operation. And also, you know, people know set operations, right? They're going to be fast, super fast, especially like set disjoint, because it just basically going to like take all of the elements in one set. And like for each of them, it's going to check if it's in the other set. That's how I would do it. But there's probably an even faster way doing it, right? And then you just have to find one element that's not in the other set. And uh, and you're gonna be, that's gonna be very fast. So I guess the set thing came from knowing computer science. Also, like that's why I do it in Python, right? I, I I I push everything into these collections and these you know the dictionaries, the sets. Not lists so much, a little bit, because all of those are written in C, and then they're they're gonna be fast. So you. If you do it in sets in Python, you know, you don't have to do set operations in Python. You do it to set operations in C, and that's going to be fast. So that's kind of where I got this thing from. All right. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna call it quits for today. I think we're pretty happy with uh, day nine. At least it didn't take four hours. That would have been too much. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow at 6 o'clock. But then I'm going to take Friday and Saturday off because I'll be traveling. Uh, so if you want to get a notification about that, please follow. You'll get a notification when I go live next time. And if you're loving this content, do like do like my one subscriber, Alex Shine. I like Alex Shine. He didn't follow me, but he did subscribe. Or they. I'm sorry. I... You one shouldn't assume. Um, uh, yeah, so thanks again. And uh, see you all tomorrow for day 10 of the advent of code. All right. Yeah, that's true. See? Rafaeno has a founder badge next to his name. You want that, you should, uh, you should join. All right, see you all uh, tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.